All right, everyone, welcome back for another deep dive. This time we're taking a look at Iron Man number one, the 2024 reboot. It's a big one. Yeah, this one has been getting a lot of buzz and for good reason. I mean, what happens when you strip Tony Stark down to nothing? No company, no fancy tech, just his wits and a rusty old suit. Yeah, it's a really interesting premise. This issue kicks off the Stark Rocks and War storyline. And it throws Tony right into the deep end. And let me tell you, it is a deep end. <laughs> Corporate sharks, mystical malware. Oh, yeah. And good old-fashioned revenge. It's all there. And right from the first page, artist Julius Oda sets this really gritty, almost cyberpunk tone with his art. Yeah, I love his style. It's not the sleek, high-tech Iron Man we're used to. Mm. We open with this worker protest mm. at what used to be a Stark factory. Right. And these workers, they're desperate. They've been abandoned by the company that once promised them the world. It's a really powerful opening scene. And guarding the factory are these hulking, mutated figures that everyone initially mistakes for hulks. Otoda really plays with our expectations there. The way he draws those scars, all jagged edges and glowing eyes, yeah. it instantly raises the tension. And then Iron Man swoops in, but even his entrance feels different. He doesn't have that same swagger. Right. There's that line, came here as Iron Man. It's almost like he's trying to convince himself. Yeah, like he's trying to remember who he is. Something's off. Definitely. And that yeah. feeling only gets stronger when his armor malfunctions mid-flight. Oh, man. You see the panic in his eyes as he plummets to the earth. This isn't the invincible Iron Man we're used to. No. Writer Spencer Ackerman is deliberately showing us a Tony Stark who's vulnerable, yeah. both physically and emotionally. He wakes up in a hospital bed, battered and bruised, and bam. He gets hit with the news that Stark Industries has been gutted. Ouch. A.M., Roxon, and this new player, Dr. Rappuccini. Mm. They've carved up his company like a Thanksgiving turkey. Talk about adding insult to injury. For those unfamiliar with these players, A.M. is basically a think tank of mad scientists. Always pushing the boundaries of tech, often with disastrous results. And Roxon. Yeah, they're a massive, ethically dubious energy corporation. With their fingers in every shady pie imaginable. This hostile takeover isn't just about business. No. It's a power grab with huge implications for the entire world. And Tony is stuck in that hospital bed. Powerless. Completely powerless to stop it. It's like watching a titan fall. But hold on, because it gets even wilder. Oh, yeah. Enter Tiger Shark and Flying Tiger. Now, these two are fascinating. They're not your typical world domination villains. They're social media obsessed. Oh, wow. Live streaming their crimes for clout, every explosion, every hostage situation. It's all content for their followers. Talk about a sign of the times. It's scary how relevant that feels, isn't it? It is. Like, we see this kind of attention-seeking behavior every day online. But this takes it to a whole new level. And it highlights a really interesting point about the changing nature of villainy. These guys aren't driven by ideology or even greed. They're driven by the need for validation, for virtual applause. It's a chilling reflection of our hyper-connected world. But here's the twist. Okay. It turns out Tony's tech troubles aren't just bad engineering. There's something else messing with his systems. Something magical. A magical virus. That's right. We get this shocking reveal that a magical virus is disrupting Iron Man's technology. It's a brilliant move by Ackerman. It is. It throws a wrench into Tony's usual problem-solving methods. He's a man of science, logic, and engineering. How do you fight a threat that operates outside those rules? Right. And as if things couldn't get any worse. Guess who's behind this mystical mayhem? Oh, I think I know where this is going. Justine Hammer. Justine Hammer. Yep. Just Dean freaking Hammer. She waltzes in, okay. decked out in Tony's most advanced armor, and basically tells him his time is over. The way Otoda draws her, she's all sharp angles and icy glares. I know, right? She just exudes this aura of power and control. And she's clearly playing for keeps. You can see the personal vendetta behind her actions. Right. Oh, absolutely. There's a line that really stood out to me. She says, you want to know what anti-magic cost me? Love life, everything good. It hints at a history with Tony that goes beyond business rivalry. There's some serious bad blood there. Oh, absolutely. And just to rub salt in the wound, she leaves Tony with nothing but a cobbled together steampunk style suit. Wow. Really taking him back to basics. It's like she's forcing him to confront his past, to remember where he came from. That steampunk suit is visually striking. It's all gears and pipes and exposed wires. 
a stark contrast to the sleek, high-tech armor we're used to seeing. It's symbolic, right? Definitely. It's like Tony's being stripped down to his bare essentials, forced to rely on his ingenuity and raw talent. It's a huge shift for the character. It's like we're going back to Iron Man's roots, but with a darker, grittier edge. This is a Tony Stark who's been knocked down, humiliated, stripped of everything he holds dear. The question is, how will he rise from the ashes? That's a great question. And that is what we are going to unpack in part two of our deep dive into Iron Man number one. We'll explore the deeper implications of this new status quo. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack. The changing nature of villainy. Yeah. And the potential for some epic showdowns. I can't wait. Welcome back to our deep dive into Iron Man number one. When we left off. Tony was staring down a bleak future. Stripped of his company. His cutting edge tech. And facing down a magical threat he can barely comprehend. Talk about a bad day. It's almost like watching a tech giant fall from grace. Yeah. It's like if Apple or Google suddenly got swallowed whole by some shadowy conglomerate. Right. And their CEO was left with a flip phone. And a pocket protector. It's a really interesting commentary on the fragility of power. Especially in the tech world. Exactly. And that's one of the things that makes this issue so compelling. Yeah. It's not just a superhero story. Right. It's a story about resilience, reinvention, uh -huh. and confronting your demons. Tony Stark is forced to start from scratch. Yeah. To rebuild his identity as Iron Man with nothing but his intellect and sheer determination. And he's doing it with a steampunk suit. It's like a visual metaphor for his entire journey. Right. He's going back to basics. Yeah. Rediscovering the fundamentals of engineering and innovation. Oh, Kata's artwork really shines here. Yeah. The way he draws that steampunk suit. Uh-huh. All clunky gears and exposed wires. That's a stark contrast to the sleek, polished armor we're used to seeing. It's almost like Tony's wearing his struggle on his sleeve. Literally. Literally. And it raises the stakes, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. We're used to seeing Iron Man blast his way through problems with repulsor rays and AI-powered gadgets. Right. But now... He's going up against AIM, Roxon, and a magically enhanced Justine Hammer with basically a glorified tin can. It's David versus Goliath, but with a whole lot more steam and gears. And that vulnerability makes him so much more relatable, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. He's not just a billionaire playboy philanthropist anymore. He's a man fighting for his legacy, his purpose, his very identity. There's a moment when he's looking at his reflection, yeah, surrounded by the wreckage of his life, and he says, I've spent way longer than I want in hospitals. It's such a simple line. Yeah. But it really hits home. It does. We're seeing the toll that this life, the constant battles, the sacrifices has taken on him. He's tired. Yeah. He's hurting. But there's still that spark of defiance in his eyes. That refusal to give up. That's what makes Iron Man such a compelling character. Speaking of compelling characters. Let's talk about Justine Hammer. She's not just some corporate stooge. Yeah. She's a force of nature. She wants to dismantle Tony Stark brick by brick. Remember that line she drops? About anti-magic costing her everything. Including her love life. There's a whole backstory there, a history with Tony that we're just starting to uncover. Right. It adds this layer of personal animosity to the conflict. Totally. Making it much more than just a corporate power struggle. It's like she wants to destroy everything Tony has built, everything he stands for. It's brutal. But it's also incredibly captivating. And then there's the magical element. Oh, yeah. We don't know the full extent of Dr. Rappuccini's plan. Right. But the fact that he's using magic to disrupt Tony's technology opens up a whole new world of possibilities. It's like Ackerman is taking Iron Man out of his comfort zone. Totally. Forcing him to confront a threat that he can't just punch or outsmart. It's a brilliant move because it forces Tony to rely on something other than his usual gadgets and gizmos. Right. He has to be more resourceful, more creative, more cunning. It's a test of his character as much as his intellect. And let's not forget about Tiger Shark and Flying Tiger. Oh, those two. These social media obsessed villains add a whole other layer of chaos to the story. They're like a walking, talking commentary on the dangers of internet fame and the lengths people will go to for likes and views. It's scary. It is. It's incredibly uh, relevant to our world. They're like the ultimate internet trolls, but with real world consequences. And they're completely unpredictable. Which makes them a wild card in this whole Stark Rocks and War. I think it's safe to say that Iron Man number one has delivered on its promise of a bold new direction for the character. Definitely. We're seeing a Tony Stark who's vulnerable, resourceful, and facing challenges unlike any he's encountered before. 
and Oda's artwork is the perfect complement to Ackerman's writing. Absolutely. It's gritty, dynamic, and full of symbolic details that add depth and complexity to the story. But what really makes this issue resonate is the way it reflects our own anxieties about the power of corporations, yeah. the allure of internet fame, and the fragility of success. We've got a hero who's lost it all, villains who are driven by the need for validation, and a world that seems to be spinning out of control. It's a potent mix. That keeps you hooked from the first page to the last. So what are your thoughts so far? Have you read Iron Man number one? Yeah. What are your predictions for this? Stark Rocks and War. Head over to Cosmic Comic Clips on YouTube and let us know in the comments. We love hearing from you. And we'll be back soon with the final part of our deep dive into Iron Man number one. Don't miss it. And we are back for the final part of our deep dive into Iron Man number one. This issue really threw us for a loop. It did, didn't it? It's like the rug got pulled out from under Tony Stark and he landed right on his... Stark reactor. Exactly. So where do we even begin with unpacking all of this? Well, I think the biggest question on everyone's mind is, what does it even mean to be Iron Man in a world like this? Right. A world where technology fails, corporations are calling all the shots. And magic is just like messing with the very fabric of reality. It's like Ackerman is holding a mirror up to our own anxieties about the future, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, think about it. We've got these massive corporations like Roxon. They're basically running the show. Social media influencers are dictating trends and behaviors. And, you know, it's not that far off from the world we live in, is it? No, not at all. And then in the midst of all of this, we have Tony Stark. Our hero. Grappling with his own legacy, his failures. The consequences of his past actions. It's a story that resonates on so many levels. Mm. It's about corporate greed. The seductive power of fame. And the struggle to hold on to your identity when everything you've built crumbles around you. It's pretty heavy stuff. And it's not just Tony's journey that's so compelling. We've got Justine Hammer. Oh, yeah. Driven by this vendetta that goes way beyond business rivalry. And then there's Dr. Rappuccini lurking in the shadows with his his mystical machinations. Yeah, I mean, the potential for twists and turns in this storyline is huge. I'm especially intrigued by the introduction of magic into the Iron Man mythos. That's a game changer. Totally. It forces Tony to think outside of his usual technological toolbox. He can't just, you know, hack his way out of this one. It's like he's back in that cave in Afghanistan. But instead of building a clunky suit to escape terrorists, right. he's got to forge a new path forward in a world where the rules of science and logic no longer apply. And speaking of forging new paths, what about those social media obsessed villains? Tiger Shark and Flying Tiger, they're such a wild card in all of this. They're unpredictable, attention hungry. And willing to do anything for views. Their presence adds this whole other layer of like satire to the story. Yeah, for sure. It's a commentary on our obsession with online validation, the need to be seen, to mm. go viral, even if it means causing chaos and destruction. It's dark, it's funny. And it really makes you think. So one thing is for sure, Iron Man number one has thrown down the gauntlet. It's a fresh start, a bold new direction for the character, and it's packed with potential. Ackerman's writing is sharp and insightful. Omona's art is gritty and dynamic. And together they've created a story that feels both timely and timeless. Absolutely. If you haven't already, go grab a copy of Iron Man number one and dive into this Stark Rocks and War. You won't be disappointed. And don't forget to join the conversation. Head over to Cosmic Comic Clips on YouTube and let us know your thoughts on the issue, your predictions for the future of Iron Man, and what you'd like to see us deep dive into next. We love hearing from you. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. And remember... Keep those repulsors charged.